I want to say a quick prayer. Father, I thank you for the man of God today. I thank you for the preparation he's put into this service. I thank you for the time that he's given to it. I also thank you for his occupation. Lord, we pray for those babies. God, that you would bring health to their bodies and get them out of his care quickly so they can go home and be with their parents. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, and, and don't beep him while he's preaching. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Are you ready today? I have a few of the, some of, some of you probably saw it on Facebook, too. And I'm going to ask you to share them. Um, okay. He said yes, okay. <laughs> but it was going to be the, probably the, Probably the uh, Friday, but the Saturday breakfast. I don't think we're gonna do that. We're gonna do it over there. I don't know if we can. Yeah, I don't know if we can live stream from that building. I don't know. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sorry today I didn't uh, print you anything, even though last time I didn't follow anything. So I don't think it makes a difference. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of us have been enjoying the teaching on the occult? Oh, you can't hear me? Oh, that's true. That's another thing I noticed. Maybe when, 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 when we ask questions, the other person, one person needs to use a mic. Because I was watching it, part of it, and I realized that, uh, you know, when they were asking questions, nobody could hear what they were saying. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of us enjoy, have been enjoying the teachings? Amen. And I believe it's very, it's very timely and very important. And I believe as the Spirit of God is leading through prayer and, you know, as the pastor, uh, God is speaking to him, uh, I believe it's even going to be greater when we begin to teach on the glory. Amen? As we begin to teach on the glory. Now, some of these teachings now are, are kind of preparing us and purging ourselves. Do you understand? Because if you're going to experience the glory, you cannot drink out of two fountains. Do you understand? You cannot uh, uh, drink out of a dirty fountain. When I talk about dirty fountain, I'm not talking about being perfect. But I'm talking about you cannot fellowship with demons and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Do you understand? You say, oh, Dr. Norm, what do you mean by fellowshipping with demons? There are a lot of things we do that uh, give us the opportunity to fellowship with demons. And as we go through the teaching and Dr. Robinson and uh, our scientists, as he handles some of these things, some of you will realize that you can also actually be having fellowship with demons through a lot of things and some of the things we bring into our homes and some of the things we watch on TV actually give these evil spirits access to our lives. Amen. And so some of these things are preparing us uh, for the glory. Amen. Because before the glory can come in, you, God is not going to come in if you're having fellowship with a demon. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So when we begin to talk about the glory, it doesn't simply mean, oh, that I have to be perfect without any mistakes. That's not what we're talking about. But there are things that you can avoid from allowing the enemy have access in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, so today we're going to talk about a few things, and um, we're going to round up my session. And last week, we talked about, uh, we talked about the, the different dimensions. We talked about God's dimension. We talked about Satan's dimension, and then we talked about man's dimension. Man is limited to his five senses. Amen. What we hear, what we smell, what we eat, what we feel. Amen. What else? And what we see. Do you know that these actually are the, if you are studying demonology, they'll tell you these are the access points for the enemy to come into your life. So for the enemy to access your life, it's related to what you hear, okay? And so there's certain music you can actually hear that gives the enemy access to your life. And when we talk about access to your life, it doesn't simply mean that the devil is going to take over your life and then you're going to be, you know, become a walking demon. Not necessarily. That is, the, that is what we call possession. Possession is when the devil occupies you, spirit, soul, and body, that you have no control. For example, in Matthew, is it Mark 5, where the Bible, the, 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 what we call the demoniac of Gadara or so, Gadarenes? That's a, a perfect example. If I'm wrong, just let me know. Uh, that's a perfect example of possession. That's where the devil takes over and you uh, are basically being controlled by him. Okay, there are other levels of, of what we call oppression, amen, obsession, where the devil may not necessarily have taken over you, but is attached somehow, maybe inflicting your body in one way or another, or inflicting your mind. Amen. So when we begin to talk about access, it doesn't necessarily mean that the devil just took over your life. There, there are ways he comes in. 
Amen. And just like what uh, Pastor Tim was teaching, you know, he comes in and he puts in a foot. You know, it's like that uh, cousin who says, uh, I don't know where to keep my uh, a box. You know, my whole house is full. Can I put this box? And the next minute he moves in. <laughs> the moment you let him bring his box, the next minute he brings his car and then he moves into your apartment. That's how the devil does. You know, he's like, I'm just going to put my foot in here. And, you know, you're like, oh, it's okay. It's just his foot. And then next minute he moves in. And when he comes in, he's not coming alone. He's coming with his grandfather and his uncles and sisters and all kind of terrible things begin to happen in your life. Amen. And so we began to talk about the God's dimension, and we talked about uh, the hierarchy. There is hierarchy in the kingdom. And I want to specify here, you know, when we talk about hierarchy in the Godhead, it's not trying to make Jesus look small. Amen. Jesus is God. Amen. He is God the Son, but he has a Father. Amen. And there is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And it's important for us to know that we need to have a relationship and know I have a relation of all three. Do you understand? Each person in the Godhead gives us something. The Holy Spirit gives us dunamis. Jesus gives us exousia, which is authority. And the Father brings kratos. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's another topic for another day. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, we began to talk about even the hierarchy in angels, how there, there are different hierarchies of angels. And we gave you an example we showed you in a particular picture in the scriptures where one particular angel was detained by a principality. Amen. And we talked about the messenger angels. Those ones, they don't, they, the Bible says some of you have entertained angels. Those ones don't have wings. They don't, they're not going to show up with wings. They look like men. Amen. Some of us have, might have encountered them. And I always tell people, don't look for angels. They're, they're here to serve. Amen. Hallelujah. But we give an example where an angel was detained by a higher principality. The prince of Persia actually detained an angel. And then he required, uh, 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 no, it wasn't Gabriel. He required Michael, who was an archangel. Amen. And we said arch comes from the word prince, where the word principality comes from. Amen. And so uh, I think it was Ephesians. Oh, where were we reading from? Ephesians chapter, I'm just going to go through. Ephesians, let me see. Is it Ephesians 3? Amen. I don't have my topic, my, my paper from that last week. Anyway. Uh, we're talking, that was from Ephesians where the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Is that Ephesians 3.21 or was it 2.21? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against... That's Ephesians 6.12. Thank you. 6.12, yes. It says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against what? Principalities. That's where the ark comes from. The archus is the same thing. Amen. Powers. Those are spirits that are delegated by these uh, principalities or these prince demons or whatever you want to call them, fallen angels. Then we talked about the, next was the rulers, am I right, of the darkness of this world. And we said these are men that have been controlled by evil spirits to make wicked uh, decisions and they make wicked policies that frustrate the church, that promote wickedness. Amen. Hallelujah. We talked about people like Hitler. He, he wasn't just doing things of his own accord. There was a spirit that was operating through him. Do you understand? that he would be able to persuade a whole people. You know, uh, some of the people that, that, that were back then would say, you know, or the people who study, they would tell you that he, he, would, he, wasn't, he wasn't even all that much a shouter. He would whisper, and the people would be trying to listen to him. And by the time he finished talking, they were ready to die for whatever he said. You know, that, that kind of persuasion is not natural. Hallelujah. So there was a spirit that was working behind him. And then we talked about the, 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 the spiritual wickedness in high places. We, these are, are demonic spirits that operate and take up human bodies. And we talked about the, the witches and the witchcraft workers and all these people that are working uh, satanic miracles. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you know the devil can work miracles? He can. Amen. So if anybody tells you the devil does not have power, it's not true. He does have power. But we have the greater power. Because we are born not of the flesh, but of God. So we come from the third dimension, God's dimension. We are born. So to be born again doesn't just mean that, uh, you know, um, I used to smoke and now I don't smoke anymore. It's more than that. It's a spiritual birth that's supposed to restore us back to God's dimension. Do you understand? So it's much more than I joined the church and now uh, my life is changed. It's more than that. It's a birth back to the spirit realm where God wants to restore us back to where we were in the beginning. And we give an example. We looked at the beginning and we saw how Adam, when he, after he had fallen or he had sinned, God came and began to look for him. And I said God wasn't blind. Uh, he got, basically, he, God came and they had fellowship in a particular spiritual dimension. And Adam wasn't there because he had fallen. 
And so God asked, where art thou? And he said, you know, I heard your voice and I was afraid. And God asked him, oh, you know, have you eaten of the tree? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So that just gives us a picture of what happened. Amen. Now we're going to move along. And what, as we go through, there are a few scriptures that I, I quoted and I talked about. But we kind of went through quickly that I want us to take a look at. And then we're going to move on to sources and then we're going to round up. Are we together? Amen. Amen. Let's look at Isaiah 14. I can see uh, some people are not here to ask me all those questions. Huh? <laughs> Amen. Isaiah 14. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to read a few things. Isaiah 14, and I'm going to read from verse 12. Okay, now some of these prophecies, uh, you know, when a prophet begins to speak, he can be speaking of the present, of a present ruler. At the same time, he can be speaking in the past, and he can be speaking in the future. Amen. And so some of these prophecies are dual in nature. So he may be, might have been prophesying about a ruler that was there at that particular time. But at the same time, if you look into the scripture, you realize God might have been revealing something for the future. And he also may have been revealing something that took place in the past. Okay? So let's take a look. It says, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which this, which this weaken the nations? Now, it's important to know that we said that all rams, in the beginning there was only one ram, and that was God's ram. So every other ram, whether it's the ram of darkness or man's fallen ram, all these rams came out of the first one. Do you understand? In the beginning there was no other ram. There was only God's kingdom. There was no church even. Amen. The church is for restoration. Do you understand? The church was given for restoration. The Bible says the priest, priestly ministry, which is a, a typology of the church, is for what? The infirmities of men. Amen. For our restoration. So at the beginning, there was one ram, God's ram. And it's important to know that the only reason why there was a fall is because God gave what he created a will. Do you understand? Because God gave a will. That's the only reason why there is a fall. If God did not give a will, there would not have been any fall. But the thing is, as I was sharing in the last uh, 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 teaching, it, it is impossible to have a relationship with somebody or with whatever you call it without a will. That's why you can't have a relationship with your computer. I know some of us try to. It's not possible. Amen. Because your computer or your cell phone, you know, if you ever go on Siri and say, Siri, do you love me? What does Siri say? Siri says, I'm not programmed to do so or I'm not permitted to do that. I don't know what she says. Amen. Because whatever is programmed in is what comes out. So uh, a Siri does not have a will. She just does whatever is programmed into her. Do you understand? So for there to be a relationship, there must be a will. There must be trust. Hallelujah. So God trusted the angels enough to give them a will and believe, and man, that he would not betray him. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why I said every relationship, relationships are based on trust, not necessarily on knowledge. Amen. Because a lot of us, the more you know about that person, the less you may want to be around that person. Amen. Hallelujah. I think we gave the illustration of, of Jesus and Judas, that Jesus knew Judas. He knew what he was going to do, but how is it possible Jesus was able to, to treat him like every other person? And even after his resurrection, Jesus didn't say anything about Judas. He didn't come back and say, you know that guy, do you know what he did to me? He didn't say anything. How is it possible? Hallelujah. So that's why we said that relationship is not really based on just knowledge. Because you may think, well, when I talk about knowledge, I'm talking about that natural knowledge. If I know more, I will be able to do more. It's not necessary that. Hallelujah. And so when we even begin to talk about the knowledge of God, that's why it goes beyond just what we read in the Bible. It goes beyond what we know in the scripture. It's more of a relationship. And we were talking about that this morning when we were praying. A lot of people love to have, some people have a relationship with the Bible, but they don't have a relationship with God. God gave us the Bible to lead us to him. Not for us to just have the Bible and say, I know everything. Amen. So you can be a, a, a professor of theology and yet not be saved. Amen? You can be a doctor of divinity and not be saved. Because it is not just, it is not head knowledge. It is revelation knowledge. So here is a professor that knows everything in the Bible and he's not saved. And here is a six-year-old that doesn't know 
one hundredth of what he knows, and he has opened up his heart to Jesus. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So it's not just how much we know. Amen. It's more of a relationship. So God trusted these that he created, and that's why there was a fall. Now, the Bible says he fell. Where did he fall from? He fell from heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's go down, and you're going to see that heaven uh, 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 is God's dwelling place or God's realm. Amen. Now, let's go down, and we're going to see a few things as we move around. I just want you to understand that all realms came out of what? One dimension. Amen. That's God's dimension. Amen. <clears throat> now, where are we? 13. What does it say? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Have you seen? I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. And I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Amen. So here's Satan. He says, I will, or, or, or Lucifer, that was before his fall. He said, I will ascend into heaven, the dwelling place of God, to the sides of the north. Now, in the realm of the spirit, God dwells in the north. Amen. <laughs> You see, in the natural, we say north, south, east, west. In the spirit, there is nothing like north, south, east, west. There is north, and there is south. <laughs> Amen. And you're going to see. And south came out of north because after the fall, he said, I will cast you down to what? The sides of the pit, which is hell. Amen. But in the spirit, there is north. Now, if you study, um, if you look at Psalm, I think it's Psalm, is it 48 that says that? It says, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. We sing that. In the city of our God. In the mountains of his holiness, mountain, the mount of God. Beautiful false situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. Not talking about Jerusalem, talking about the new, the, the, the heavenly Jerusalem. Sides of the north, you see, and city of the great king. So God dwells in the north. Amen. The Bible says, I think in, um, hallelujah, glory to God. Psalm 89, I think 11. No, no. Yeah, I think Psalm 89, 11. It says, promotion does not come from the east, or from the west, or from the south. So where does it come from? It comes from the north. That's where God dwells. Hallelujah. A lot of you are looking confused. Okay. Amen. Hallelujah. So th well, these are spiritual things. So in the realm of the spirit, we don't have north, south, east, west. It's north, where God dwells. And any other thing that's not de dwelling there. So anybody who tells you after you die, you know, you go to a certain place called... You know, that would have taught us, you know, the Catholics, oh, you go to a certain place and you stay there until all your, you know, there's nothing like that. It's either north or south. So either you go into the presence of God or you descend into the pits of hell. Amen. Hallelujah. So anybody who tells you, oh, you're going to be kept somewhere and they're going to whip you there until, you know, a certain time when you've paid for your sins. Look, I want to tell you the truth. I tell people, it is impossible for you to pay for your sins impossible. Do you know how long it will take you to pay for your sins? Eternity. That's why those who, who, who reject Jesus Christ are going to spend eternity in hell. You cannot pay for your sins. It's like, you know, I, I give you a cup and tell you to go to the ocean and empty out the ocean. How long will it take you to use a cup to empty the ocean? Will you ever finish? You will never. So that's how it is. You cannot pay for your sins. Hallelujah. I'm just, just to address that aspect because you know, people have those kind of doctrines. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you're a Catholic, I'm sorry, but uh, we will offend you. Yeah, I didn't say anything bad about the Catholics. I just said purgatory does not exist. <laughs> Amen. So just, this is the truth. Amen. So I love the Catholics, but uh, purgatory does not exist. Amen. Hallelujah. In the scriptures. I don't know where else they, they, they find that. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's just read on and let's see what happened. I just trying to, we're trying to look at what happened to this guy called Lucifer. Amen. Are we together? It says, for thou said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Often the stars of God often talk about the angels of God. And I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. So that's where God dwells. And I will ascend above the heights of the clouds and I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Amen. Now let's look at another scripture. Let's go to uh, Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. Hallelujah. So we began to speak on how all rams came out of one. Praise the Lord. And I think I was sharing this with us last week on how Satan fell. Amen. So he said in his heart, I will ascend above God. 
Amen. I will overtake my maker. I want to be like God. I will be like the most high. And amen. But let's look at 28, another place where it gives us another version of what happened. Are we together? Amen. Let's start from... Let's start from 11. It says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyros, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Thou sealest up the sum. Now, remember what I was saying. The prophecy, the prophecy could be dual nature, meaning that he could be speaking about a ruler, but when you look into the scripture, you realize he wasn't just speaking about a man. Do you understand? So he was actually prophesying about Satan in the past. And using that as a picture to speak about a current king in this particular time. And he's still speaking in the future. Amen. So you show you how uh, wonderful God is. Do you know that God dwells in the past? He's in the future and he's in the present. Amen. That's why the Bible says he what? He's the God that is and is and is to come. Do you understand? Amen. Hallelujah. So that's how prophecy is. So let's go on. It says, it says thou sealest up the sum. You see that? Full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. So Satan, the Bible says this, to seal us up the sum, means that I was talking of to us saying that he was created in perfection. He was perfect. Amen. He had God-like perfection. And I was trying to share with us that one of the reasons why the angels are not redeemed, when you fall from perfection, there is no redemption. Amen. There is no redemption for the angels. Amen. So Satan was perfect. He says he was perfect in beauty. Hallelujah. He, is, he was perfect in beauty. How many times do we see the devil deceiving people because of their beauty? Oh, you know, you, you, you're so beautiful. What are you doing as a Christian? You need to be modeling. You need to be, you know, in Hollywood. You need, and they, they go after it. Hallelujah. Amen. The same thing that drove the enemy out of the presence of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Are we together? Let's go on. He says, thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. That's why I know he was referring to just the king of Tyrus. Amen. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardis, the topaz, and the diamond, and the beryl, and the oinks, and the jasper, and the sapphire, and the emerald, and the carbuncle, and the gold. The workmanship of thy tablets and thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. So Satan, we know he was created. And the Bible shows us here who he was covered in precious stones. Now all these stones, about, probably about uh, um, a greater number of them are the same stones that are in the, in the breastplate of the high priest. Amen. And, and I was sharing with us how every time, if you look in the book of, of, whether it's in Ezekiel or in Revelation, every time they looked upon the father, they said he was like either a sardine stone. I mean, so the father is actually beautiful. Do you understand? In glory. Amen. Hallelujah. So Satan was actually covered in these stones. Now, I want us to understand something. The Bible talks as we go down, you're going to see it talks about the stones of, of fire. We're talking about how there, there, there are hierarchies in, even in the angelic realm. Amen. Not all angels can stand the fullness of God's presence. There are some angels that are higher in rank that are before the throne of God. Not all of them. How do I know? When Gabriel, when, they, when, when, when Gabriel spoke to, um, when Gabriel spoke to, what's her, the, the husband of Elizabeth? What was his name? Zachariah? Yeah. And Zachariah did not believe. What did Gabriel say? He muted him. But before he muted him, he said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. He was trying to declare his rank, his spiritual rank. Do you understand? Hallelujah. That's why I was trying to tell us that angels, that there are different ranks of angels. Amen. Hallelujah. But let's go down and let's begin to see the kind of beautiful things that Satan had. Amen. Are we together? Now let's go to verse 14. It says, thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. So God created him. And the reason why I want you to see some of these things, because if you don't know who the enemy is, you cannot fight. The first thing you do, you form the scripture. You need to know who the enemy is. What happened to him? Amen. You know, the Bible was speaking, I think it was, um, it was Paul that was speaking to Timothy when he told him. He said, do not let novices uh, be spiritual leaders. He says, lest they, come, lest they, they, they become proud 
and they fall after the condemnation of Satan. So it actually gives, gives us a picture of how Satan fell. Do you understand? Now, he says that thou art the anointed cherub. So Satan was anointed. Amen. He was anointed. That's why I tell preachers, I don't care how anointed you are. If you don't get careful, you can still fall. Because some people think, oh, because they're anointed and they know how to preach. Oh, you know, the devil is miles away. No. Amen. You can be in the glory and pride will still come in there. That's what the Lord told me. He said there is one spirit that can stand in the glory of God, and that's the spirit of pride. He will come in the place of, of where the glory and the brightness is, and he will still get a hold into your heart. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says that he was anointed. He says, thou art the anointed church. So Satan was anointed. And I want you to understand something. When God gives a gift, God does not take it back. But when you turn away from him, that thing becomes corrupted. And so when you, we study down, you realize that Satan is still anointed, but his anointing is corrupted. That's why he's able to do the things he does. So anybody tells, oh, the devil has no power. It's not true. Amen. But what he was given has been what? It's been polluted. It's been corrupted. Hallelujah. Amen. The beautiful thing is that when you, st when you study the Bible, the, the word there for anointing is not the same one as the, the, the traditional word. You know, the traditional word is uh, mishak, which means to anoint with oil or to smear. This word is mimshak, which means to expand or to influence. Do you understand? It means to expand or to increase, to influence. What do you think the, the, the worldly singers are using today? What kind of anointing do you think they're using? Why is it that when they bring out a, you know, a, a new thing comes up, people, everybody's dying to get it? Do you understand? What do you think they're using? Why is it that when a record comes out in the world, within minutes or seconds, all over, people are buying all over the place? What anointing, what grace do you think they're operating under? What power, rather, let me use that word. What power do you think they're operating under? That's that same spirit. That spirit of influence. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why a, a child goes into, into a particular community and he's influenced by certain things and he comes out a different person. That same spirit of influence. That's what the devil uses. Do you know that most, they, they, they say, I think they say about 95 or 90% 90 of, of most of these musicians that are serving the devil, many of them came out of the church. Many of them were gospel singers. Amen. Many of them were singing for God. People like Whitney Houston, they, were, they, were, they came out of the church. They were in church doing the singing and God was using them. And of course the devil said, why are you wasting your time in the church? You know, this, you know I could give you more money. This, your gift, can get you more money. The Bible talks about Judas, that he loved money and lost his soul. Hallelujah. Money. The Bible says in a split second of time, he showed Jesus the kingdoms of this world. All that we're struggling for, all that we're working and laboring for. The Bible says in a split second of time, he showed it to Jesus. Said, you don't need to go to the cross. You don't need to struggle. Just worship me and I'll give you these things. Oh, Hallelujah. We don't know the kind of battle that we're in. I, I, we're, there was a young man that we were, we were, we were praying over who we were, we were trying to deliver. He got into this occult or whatever, and they told him that, you know, they promised him that he would become a millionaire at the age of 25 and die at the age of 27. The devil is a liar. The devil has no free gift. <laughs> you become a millionaire at 25 and then die at 27. That means before you even start enjoying the thing, then you die. Sometimes I wonder why some of the, so many of these great movie stars, and stuff, they just die, you know, like a tree that's cut down. You know, like a tree that's beautiful and suddenly it's just cut down. They're doing at their peak. The devil doesn't give them a second chance. You know, when you, I, I hate to call names, but when you look at Michael Jackson, just when he said, I'm going to come back, you know, he wanted to make a comeback. Died at age, what, 50? Whitney Houston, was it 50 or was it 49? Prince, was it what, 48 or 49? They, they just die like, the devil has no free gift. And I, I, one of the reasons why I, 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 we're talking about these dimensions is to open our eyes to realize this is not, we're not just dealing with church. We're in a spiritual battle. We're in a spiritual battle. I've known people that told me, look, I'm going to give my life to Jesus, but let me just go and do this last thing and then I'll change up my, I'll, I'll, I'll repent. They died before they did it. Because the devil does not want anyone to change boats or ship, take, <laughs> change ships. So it's more of a spiritual battle. It's not just, you know, today I may be saved, tomorrow. No, 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 no. This is a spiritual battle that we're in. Amen. And if God has given us all power, why we allow ourselves to be subject to the second realm of darkness? Amen. Hallelujah. So Satan was anointed. Amen. And he still has that spirit of influence that he's using today to take over our homes and our families as much as we give him access. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. And we talked about one of the ways that he accesses our lives is through even the television. Amen. Amen. What we watch. Amen. So when the pastors, when we were talking about some of these movies, movies that are, you know, organized by the kingdom of darkness to pollute this generation, and then you let your children watch it, you know, it's, you just give the enemy access. That's all you're doing. Praise the Lord. And suddenly the child starts changing, you know. Hallelujah. You know, I, I, my, my daughter started watching a particular thing. And, I mean, to me, naturally speaking, there was nothing wrong with it. But I knew that her attitude and her behavior started changing when she was, well, I had to stop it immediately. She cried. I said, well, I, you know, amen. I just knew there was something wrong with that thing. Amen. Especially when I said having dreams of, of, of that thing. I said, no, there's something wrong. Amen. And so these are all access points. Amen. Let's go down. So we know he was anointed. Uh, verse 15. Are we there? No, no. I think we're at verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covered. I have set, set thee so. Thou was upon the holy mountain of God. So you see there again, the mountain of, of God. Amen. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. So in the presence of God, there is a sea of glass. There are stones of fire. Amen. God's glory it burns. Amen. If God were to show up in this place in the fullness of his glory, most of us would, would dematerialize. It would be like an atomic bomb, even greater, hundred and million times greater. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why our physical bodies cannot stand the glory of God. That's sometimes when the power of God comes on people, they fall out in the spirit and things like that because our physical bodies were not made to, to, to carry such amount of glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's move on down. It says, thou was perfect in thy ways from the day thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. It says, by the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. It says, thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty, and thou hast corrupted, thou hast, thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I was sharing this last time. A, a, a pride, the, the, the Greek word for pride actually means to be blinded by, by light. Now, it says that he was corrupted by his brightness. So, basically, the light that was coming off of him actually blinded him. Do you understand? That's why I was sharing with us last week that uh, when you have knowledge of God's word or of righteousness and you don't have the love of God, it will blind you. I came out of, uh, the earlier part of my, I came out of a holiness movement. We were so into the word of God and so much in tune with righteousness, but we had no love. And we were hard on people. And that's why many people back then didn't want to be saved. Because we say, it has to be like this. If it's not like this, you know. You know, I, I got born again today and Jesus delivered me today. Everything changed today. If it doesn't change today, you're not a child of God. We were hard on people, blinded by the light that we were carrying. Do you understand? So you can be that hard and, and yet be so, so wicked like the Pharisees. So much knowledge of God, but yet so wicked. No love. Praise the Lord. That's why the Bible says love is the greatest commandment. So as we study the word, how is it possible Satan was blinded by the very light that he was in? Hallelujah. That's why I always tell people, humility. Amen? Humility is a thing. Hallelujah. Humility is the thing. Hallelujah. I used to read the scripture. I never really understood the scripture until a few years ago I was seeking God. And sometimes I don't like sharing things like this, but I'm just sharing it to explain the scripture. I was actually seeking God. I was in the presence of God and seeking God for long hours. I think my wife had lost her dad, and so she had traveled, and so I was basically alone, and I was just continuously seeking God. And the glory of God, I actually began to glow. I began to glow physically. The same thing that happened to Moses, the same thing that happened to Stephen, the same thing that happened to Jesus when he was on the mount. I began to glow physically. And I ran to the mirror, and I began to look at myself. And the Holy Spirit rebuked me and said, get out of the mirror. And then he showed me, that's when I began to, he downloaded and I began to understand how Satan fell. How he was corrupted by the light that he was living in. How he was carried away, corrupted by his own brightness. Hallelujah. So you can be in the light, you can be in the glory of God. And be blinded by it. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
You guys are so quiet. Hallelujah. Amen. I know it sounds weird. Oh, do you mean you are really glowing? Yes. It's happened once. It actually happened twice. The second time was somebody else who noticed it. Amen. You say, oh, doctor, that can't be of God. It's in the Bible. Okay, Stephen glowed. Moses glowed. Jesus glowed. It's in the Bible. Amen. If you stay in the presence of God, the presence of God will begin to affect your physical body. It will. Hallelujah. It will affect your body. Amen. There are realms of the spirit. You get into, there are certain things that, you know, you can't just, like I was sharing in the morning. There are certain things that you, you, you know, you can't just study and know. Some things you're going to experience them. And when you experience them, you look in the Bible and say, wow, so that's what it means. Because God gave us this word to lead us to him. I always tell people, God is, God will not go against his word. But he's not limited by it. Like the woman of the issue of blood. How did she know that she touched the body of Jesus? That she would be healed. Where did she study that? Did you know that Jesus didn't even make reference to it? Paul later on operated in the same dimension. He never, you know, he never made reference to it. These are adventures in the, in the miraculous. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so I always say God is not limited to, and this is given to us so that enough is here for us to believe. Do you understand? Amen. I used to have this pastor in Nigeria. I mean, he would pray and pray. And when the glory of God would come down on the stage, uh, people would rush. And as they touched the stage, they would be healed. The religious people say, oh, that's not in the Bible. Let's see, see how religion blinds people. Amen. Hallelujah. It's the same principle. The anointing of God is transferable. Do you understand? Why is you're transferring it by cloth or by aprons or by a stick, like in the times of Elijah or Elisha? Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's when I say, widen your view. Amen. So God will not go against his word, but it's important for you to know God can do much more. Amen. He can do beyond and, and be beyond what we've seen. When I talk about the, the movement of, of miracles and all this, praise the Lord. But it's just for us to know. Amen. Now let's move on. Are we together? As we round up what, what the devil looked like. It says, thine beauty has lifted, I think we're at 17 and then... Okay, thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by the reason of thy brightness. It says, I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, and they shall behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquities of thy traffic. Therefore, I will bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, and it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth. So now this is talking about the future of the enemy. Amen. How God is going to deal with him. He said, I'm going to bring up. A, a, a fire, <laughs> you see me bending down. I'm going to bring out a fire from the midst of thee. Amen. So the devil can't run away. He said, I'm going to bring out a fire from the midst of thee and destroy thee. Amen. Hallelujah. So all dimensions came out of one. And we see how the devil fell. And the reason why I'm sharing some of these things is to bless you spiritually. Do you understand? Amen. So it's not just to inform you, but also to bless you so that you will know. Amen. As the Lord begins to move, as we begin to teach about the glory of God, and, you know, I've seen people once who begin to talk about God's glory, and God begins to speak to them, they go off. Amen. Nobody can talk to them again. They can't talk to the pastor. They can't listen to anybody again. And I was like that as a young, you know, when I was growing up as a young person, but God had to handle me in a certain way. Amen. I was very, very rude and everything, you know. Oh, I'm the one hearing from God, and you don't hear from God, and I used to do all that as a teenager. And I say, oh, the young people would, dream, would see visions, and the old men would dream dreams. And whenever any old man would cry, I'd say, you go ahead, go to bed, go and dream your dreams, or we'll see our vision. You know, as the youth people, we're always excited, and, you know, we always saw the, the older people as fighting us and all that stuff. But when you come into the presence of God, begins to deal with those kind of things. Amen? Before he begins to take you to the next dimension of you so that you don't destroy yourself. Hallelujah. God is, is wonderful. You know, he's not like he doesn't use us, and he doesn't just want to use us and get rid of us, you know, like you drink from a bottle of water and throw it out. He wants to preserve you. Amen? He doesn't just want to use you and get rid of you. He wants to use you and have a relationship with you. Amen? Hallelujah. Now we're going to talk about sources. So why does God warn us about the sources, where we get things, where we hear things from? Amen? Quickly, Levi Le Leviticus 19.31. So someone should get that for me. Deuteronomy 18, 11, another person should get that for me. And I'm going to get 1 Samuel 28, verse 7. Go ahead. Regard them not them that have committed spirit, neither seek after wizards who defile, who defile thy land. I'm the Lord your God. 
Hallelujah. Oh, Dr. Norum, I, I just went there. It's nothing wrong. I came out and nothing happened to me. No. You, when you come out of those places, you come out with a demon, something attached to you. That's why God said, do not regard them. Amen. It's wrong. It says, do not regard them. Do not seek after them. Hallelujah. To be what? Defiled by them. So that means they defile. I was giving a testimony, I think, of one of the, the sisters that, you know, she wasn't saved at this time. And then she, she went to a, a Santa Maria or whatever meeting. And after that, she said she left there, strange things that happened to her. I mean, she would be sleeping on the bed and something would lift her and throw her on the floor. I mean, kind of weird thing. And she, was, she didn't know what happened. But after she got saved, that was when she realized where these demonic spirits came in. Because they need access. They need agreement. Everybody say agreement. agreement. Yes. God needs also what? Agreement. For you to be saved, there must be what? Is there anybody here that they put a, a revolver to your head and say you have to be born again? No. It came out of what? Agreement. So demons seek agreement. Amen. So God warned them. He said, do not seek after them. Do not regard them. Amen. And, and it's so sad today. Oh, my God. I think there was a, I, I was listening to a, a pastor, and he said he went to a particular city, and um, I mean, he said his meeting was, his revival meeting was almost empty. But he said that he noticed that in the next meeting, on the next building, he said a long line of people, like 400 people were lined up. And he asked somebody, he said, where is the, because it was a small town, where is everybody? Where, who are all those people? They said they're all lined up to see a psychic. Uh, you can see what's going on. All lined up to, to, to see a psychic. But nobody in the presence of God. Nobody coming to the house of God. So they're out there to seek a familiar spirit. That's what the Bible calls it. Amen? Hallelujah. Where's the next scripture? Let's go ahead. Deuteronomy 11, 18, 11. Are we there? Deuteronomy 18, 11. Quickly, somebody else should open. 1 Samuel 27, verse 28, verse 7. 1 Chronicles 10, 13. We just want to get this scripture so we can... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So many of these people and these, uh, 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 what do you call them, the palm readers or the stargazers, they all consult with evil spirits. They consult with the dead. Dead, talking about the spirits of death, not necessarily that the dead people can speak. Amen. Remember the story of, of Lazarus? Hallelujah. And the rich man? Amen. Even when he pleaded, he said, let Abraham, uh, let you know, so-and-so come and... Uh, Go talk to here and let Lazarus go and speak to my people. He said, he cannot go. Do you understand? And so even if you have loved ones in heaven, they cannot come here and speak to you. See, Dr. No, but I saw, um, you know, my mom that died many years ago appeared to me. That's not your mom. It's a familiar spirit. The Bible calls them familiar spirits. So these are spirits or demons that are on the earth that monitor. Do you know there are more demons, actually more demons than there are people? So there are so many of them. And they monitor and they watch what, we ha what happened on earth. So when you go to that person, he says, ooh, makes a certain strange noise and says, your grandma was a wonderful woman. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That's a familiar spirit. Amen. How many of you do, do you know the devil knows where you live? How many do you know? The devil knows where you live. He does. Amen. There is a spirit world that's all around us. There are demons that operate all around us. So the devil knows where we live. Amen. So he can always tell you your past, but he can't tell your future. He can't. A devil can't read your mind. He only knows what you're going to do by what comes out of your mouth. And he's not everywhere. Some oh, the devil is there. The devil is not everywhere. The Bible says he what? He's like a what? Like a roaring lion. Not a, he's not a roaring lion. There's only one lion, and that's the lion of the tribe of Judah, Jesus. The Bible says he is like a roaring lion. Doing what? Going to and fro. So that means he's not everywhere. If he were to be everywhere, he won't be running around the whole place to and fro. But he has, a, he's a, he has a, a, a good network. Do you understand? He has a, a kingdom that's well set up to monitor, to see how things are going, that report back to him. Hallelujah. So he's well organized. Jesus even said it. He said the devil has a kingdom. He didn't say the devil has a church. He said the devil has what? A kingdom. So the devil is organized. He has angels. He has demons. He has all these set up in a system. So he doesn't know everything. Amen. He's not all knowing. He doesn't know what you're going to do. He doesn't know what your future is. He doesn't know what you're going through except you open your mouth and start complaining. <laughs> yeah. Amen. So he, he seeks agreement. 
You know, so when you open your mind, say, oh, I, 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 you know, this thing is killing me. And then he says, okay, let's come into agreement and <laughs> let's kill her quickly. Yeah, so he seeks agreement through words, through what you do, through what you watch, through what you come in contact with. Amen. So all these, through what you listen to. Amen. So these are all sources of, of agreement. So God warned them, amen, not to, to, to get in fellowship with demons. I know a lot of Christians who still open, you know, the stargazers and all that. Those are, those are demonic spirits, familiar spirits. And you say, oh, I am cancer and I'm Virgo. Be careful. Hallelujah. Don't have fellowship with demons. So anybody asks you, what's your star? Tell them Jesus. <laughs> yeah. You know, I remember when, before I got saved, we read those things. They say, oh, don't go out today and don't do this today. Something bad is going to happen and we'll be afraid. And, you know, why will you allow the devil control your life? Amen. Why will you allow? The devil. That's why when I go to those Chinese restaurants, that I throw those fortune cookies in the garbage. Same nonsense. Hallelujah. Why should your destiny be in, in, inside a cookie? Do you understand who you are? You're in Christ Jesus. You know, and it sounds funny, but a lot of us do that. And we open it and we read it and then we, 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 we oh, today, go play the lottery. Amen. Hallelujah. So you go to play the lottery because the fortune cookie told you to. Amen. Amen. I know there's a lot of argument over the lottery if it's God's will or not God's will. Amen. I believe God will bless me, not through some uh, luck. Amen. <laughs> God's children are blessed, not through luck. Praise the Lord. Amen. So let's move on. So who has the next scripture for us? The next one was 1 Samuel 28, 7, and then there's 1 Chronicles 10, 13. Another person, Isaiah 8, 19. Let's hit all these scriptures. Yes. Then said Saul unto his servants, mm -hmm. Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, mm -hmm. that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servants said to him, Behold, if there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit, let me know it. Okay, so this is um, Saul, King Saul. So King Saul has backslidden. The Bible says God no longer answered him by Purim. Purim was the breastplates that the priest wore, okay? And it would light up. If they would say, Lord, should I go? It would light up, meaning yes, or it would dim, meaning no, okay? So those, those, those were what the priest would wear. The Bible said God did not answer him by Purim. God did not answer him by dreams, amen? So God speaks through dreams. There are God dreams, and maybe one time we'll talk about that how to know the dreams that come from God. Amen. And those ones that come because you ate too much pizza. Okay? The Bible says, God did not answer him by dreams. Amen. Nor by, you know, God, by prophets. So God refused to answer him. There was no word that was coming. So he decided to seek a witch or a person with a familiar spirit, with a demon. And, and you know, before this time, when he was zealous for God, he had chased all of them. He had chased them out of the land, so there was none left in the land apart from this particular woman, maybe it was among the few that were still there, who probably maybe she was still, she still had her gift but was probably hiding in secret because she knew that if they catch her, she, they would kill her. Amen. And so Paul, or Saul, sorry, King Saul has now backslidden. That's the sign of backsliding. You go back to those things that you got rid of, okay? Those tapes that you threw, th threw in the cupboard or you threw in the trash can, after 10 years, you're now going back to look for them. Where is that music I used to play? And, you know, and you're going back to digging the trash can. That's Saul, backslidden. Amen. Burn them if you, if you need to go back to them. Hallelujah. Burn the bridges. That's what we used to say. <laughs> Amen. Burn those bridges so that there's no need to go back to them. Hallelujah. So he decides to go back. And they tell him there is this, this witch in Endor who has a familiar spirit. Amen. So he goes to this woman. And you can read the story when you get home. And, you know, he asked, inquired to bring up Samuel. Amen. And people argue with Samuel. As far as I'm concerned, the moment you depart from this world, you cannot come back. The only people who are permitted to trans transcend between worlds are the angels who are messengers. Do you understand? They can come back and forth. But the redeemed cannot come back and forth. Hallelujah. There's nowhere in scripture where someone who left came back. Amen. And anyway, as we read the next scripture, where is that 1 Chronicles 10? 1 Chronicles 10, 13. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the Bible says Saul died, first of all, because he disobeyed the word of the Lord. Amen. Now, he was already kind of, the kingdom was taken from him because he disobeyed. But the Bible says another reason why he died, not just that the kingdom was taken from him, but that he died was because he sought a medium. The Bible didn't say because he sought Samuel. He sought what? A medium. He sought someone with a familiar spirit. So God was angry, and that was why Saul was killed. And he was killed in battle. Hallelujah. You know, so I think it was uh, some, uh, uh, some months ago or some year when I was praying, and the Lord began to tell me, and the Lord told me, he said, do you notice that no king that was in my will and obeyed me died in battle? All the kings who died in battle went outside the will of God. No king that was in the will of God died in battle. Hallelujah. David almost died in battle, but God saved, preserved him. Hallelujah. So God told me, and I believe it's not my will to die in battle. Amen. I don't care what your belief is, my belief. I don't believe it's God's will for me to die in battle. I don't believe I should, you know, go to preach the gospel on a plane and the plane will blow up and I'll just die like that and not, without blessing my children. I think the church, we need to begin to change the way we think. Because when you give the devil a blank check, he will sign it. You know, I was in a church and, you know, the, 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 the wife of the pastor came up and she was saying, well, thank God. This was probably like uh, 2008 or something. Well, 2008 has come and gone. And we're all alive. And, you know, any of us could have died. And, you know, if somebody died the other day. It could be any of us. My spirit rejected that. I said, in the name of Jesus, Father, I reject that. Anything will not happen to me. Hallelujah. The Bible says David blessed his generation. Abraham, these are the examples God has given. They blessed their generation. Hallelujah. Refused to die in battle. Refused to die. Hallelujah. They said, oh, these Christians, they were going for, you know, they went, you know. Yeah, I mean, if you want to go and die as a martyr, it's up to you. Amen. I mean, if, you want to, if, if, if God has it that you go to preach the gospel and you die, that's one thing. But I'm talking about a situation where, you know, you're traveling and you have an accident. It's not God's will for you to go that way. Amen. And we need to begin to preach it and begin to believe it. That I will live and bless my generation. Hallelujah. Amen. Many of you are quiet. <laughs> I know people don't talk like this, but it's true. It is according to your faith. Amen. So I will live and bless my generation. Hallelujah. If God wants me to go to some missionary field and, and die for him, that's a different thing. But I'm not talking about, you know, dying, you know, dying like that. Having your children die before you. Why should an old man bury his child? That's not the will of God. The Bible says your young will not cast their, your, your trees will not cast their fruits while the fruit is still young. What do you think that means? You think just talking about a tree and fruit? It's simply telling you, you're not supposed to bury your children. Amen? Hallelujah. Many of you are, you are quiet, but this is the gospel. Amen. And even if somebody didn't have that experience, we don't have to live by other people's experience. Let's get the word of God and say, God, this is what is going to happen to me. This is what's going to happen in my generation. You say, oh, Dr. Norm, don't say it too loud. The devil may hear it. Hey, that's what I'm saying. Let him hear it. Hallelujah. That's where boldness comes. Amen. Just because you're quiet doesn't mean somebody's not speaking. If you keep quiet, somebody is still speaking over your life. Amen. And what he may speak may not be what you want. So you better but speak what you want. Hallelujah. The Bible says life and death is where? In the power of the tongue. Amen. So it may sound hard, but I'm just telling you, this is what the church needs to begin to believe. Hallelujah. We will live, we will bless our generations. The Bible says when David had come to the full old age, he called his children, called them together, blessed them. Amen. Isaac, the same thing, blessed them. Abraham, the same thing, blessed. These are the examples. Amen. Saul, out of the will of God, died in battle. Many of the other kings who were out of the will of God. Even, uh, was it Jehoshaphat that was killed by Nero that God had sent Nero and Jehoshaphat didn't listen to God? Josiah. Yeah, yeah. He wasn't listening to God because God had sent that particular king. But he, he didn't listen. Amen. And so he, he also died in battle. Amen. But I'm just trying to show us, oh, hallelujah. Amen. Maybe too much for some of you. Amen. But I think as you continue hearing this thing, it's going to lift up your faith. And you begin to pray. You begin to say, Lord, I'm not going to bury my children. I'm going to live to good old age and bless the generation. If Jesus comes before then, fine, we'll all go. Amen. Hallelujah. But I'm not going down with any, any, in any plane. Hallelujah. I'm not going down in any bus. Hallelujah. 
Amen. I say it and I declare it. Amen. So you better speak it over yourself and speak it over your family. I'm not going down by cancer in the name of Jesus. That's the way to keep the devil away. Hallelujah. You speak it to your body. Father, in the name of Jesus. You see, praying is not just, oh, God, give me this, give me this. No, 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 no. It's more than that. I wake up in the morning. I begin to march around. I say, Father, I thank you because there's life in my body. You said the spirit that is in me. <laughs> the Bible said the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, if he be in you, he will do what? He will give life to your mortal body. Father, I thank you because there's life in my body. Cancer will not stay in my body. Hypertension will not stay. Arthritis will not stay. That's the way to speak it out. Over the years, these things will become part of your life. And that thing will not be able to attach itself to you. This is the gospel we preach. Are you hearing me? Can you imagine from a child meditating on these things, living in these things? Oh, glory to God. Sorry. I'll go beyond too much time. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's round up. Any other scriptures that we all done? Amen. So we read that place, 1 Chronicles 10, 13. Tells us why Saul died in battle. Because he consulted. So I'm not trying to say that those who are sick and those who die, uh, you know, by the plane, that they are consulting evil spirits. That's not what I'm trying to say. But I'm trying to say the faith of the church needs to begin to come up. And we begin to believe. And we begin to say no. We begin to say no to cancer. Oh, it's a normal thing, doctor. No, anybody could die by cancer. No! CNN says, this year, hundreds of people are going to die by cancer. I say no in the name of Jesus. It will not be my portion. We have to, it has to come out. Because words are powerful. As they are releasing it into the air, CNN, they're releasing it into the air. The fallen man, they're releasing it into the air. Cancer this year, uh, one out of five. Cancer, they're speaking it into the air. You stand and you keep quiet. It will fall on you. You open your mind and say, no, in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, I will live and not die, but declare the goodness of God. That's the power that's in your mouth. And the church is quiet. That's why we're dying. That's why the devil is taking us out before our time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Forgive me tonight. I know it's supposed to be a Bible study. Okay. Now let's look at Mark 1, 24, Luke 4, 34. Two instances where demons began to speak. Uh, Jesus went into the temple and the Bible says there was a man with an unclean spirit. So there was a difference between a man that is possessed and a man with an unclean spirit. So the man with the unclean spirit, the spirit was in him, but not, did not take over him. So he sat down like every religious person, looking normal, until the power of God came down. And then that spirit began to manifest. So a lot of those manifestations that, you know, we have in church where everybody's dancing and then the power of God comes down and people begin, those are unclean spirits. That's not possession. Possession is where it takes over. And the man is living in the mountains and in the tubes and, you know, he's walking down the street half naked and with his hair all scattered and he's just walking around. That's possession. Hallelujah. That one you cannot medicate. Do you understand? <laughs> you can't medicate out a devil. You hear me? That's why we need to experience and we need to know the word of God and get more into God's power. You can't medicate away a devil. Neither can you teach him out. He needs to be what? Cast it out. Praise the Lord. Amen. So in these two instances, Jesus went into the temple and the Bible said there was a man with an unclean spirit. So he was not possessed, but in the presence when Jesus began to manifest the anointing, that demon began to manifest. And the Bible says the devil or the demon began to cry out, say, you are the Holy One of God. Now my question to you is, is Jesus the Holy One of God? Yes. So the demon was speaking the truth, but it was coming out of a dirty source. Do you understand? Hallelujah. So that is why God is very particular of where is it coming from. The same thing, I think, Acts 16, 20. The Bible says there was a woman with a, a spirit of what, sorcery, a sorcery, a divination that followed Paul. And was it Paul and Silas? Follow them every day. And every day said, these are the holy men of God sent from God to come and teach us the word of God. Now, what she said was true, but it was coming from an evil source. Do you understand? So Paul kept quiet and until the thing began to grieve him. And the Bible said he turned around and he rebuked that thing and the thing left. And when the people realized that the source of their income was taken away, they began to beat up Paul. Hallelujah. I'm just trying to show you that the source is important. Hallelujah. Amen. So you could go to a, a palm reader or whatever they call them, and they tell you, oh, your mother was such a good woman. She may be telling you the truth, but that's a demonic source. Because it's not long before she would drag you astray. Amen. Or you give access to these devils and these demons. Amen. Hallelujah. So the source is very important. Where, where we give access. What we give access to. Amen. So these demons seek agreement. They seek people that will team up with them. Joshua 7 verse 11, the story of Achan, a very common story we often used to talk about, where he took something. I think the Bible called it a cursed garment. I believe it must have had some kind of symbol or something 
you know, that attached it to the, the kingdom of darkness. And God, because of that, God could not go with them. And Joshua, and they lost in the battle. Amen. And God told them, say, get that accursed thing, that thing that has been cursed. That's why I always tell Christians, you go, to, you travel to India, okay, and you have nothing else to do. And so you decided, because you're on vacation, you decided to go to, you know, to the museum or some store to get something nice to bring back to the United States. So you go there and then you see this ugly looking thing. <laughs> and then you bring it and say, oh, this looks nice. I'm going to take it as a token from India. Amen. And maybe you don't know that's an idol or, or, or a demonic symbol. And then you take it and you bring it into your home. Hallelujah. You've just given the enemy access to your house. Many of us don't know that thing. Oh, you just go see this picture and you, buy, you just buy them and put it in, you know. Amen. I don't believe in just putting everything. Oh, this is from the devil. That's from, no, no, no. But you have to be wise. Some of us have statues of Buddha. What is Buddha doing in your house? That fat person with a big belly and a big head. What is he doing in your house? You say it's, he's just, it's, it's, it's a decoration. That is an access point for Satan into your home. Hallelujah. And so since you brought that thing into the house, mommy and daddy are quarreling. There's confusion everywhere. There is... You know, you're just confused. Why would you give the enemy? Why do you give him a foothold? Why do you give him an opportunity? I mean, there are enough pictures that you can put on your wall without picking one from the pit of hell. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> yes, so these things happen where we give access to the enemy. Amen. And I believe God is, is some of these teachings that they're giving us is not to, to tie you down or make you feel, but my, my God, I mean, if I have to keep the enemy out, I, I don't want anything to do with him. Jesus said, he says, the, the prince of this world is come and is find what? Nothing in me. There was nothing that the enemy had. No, he had nothing of the devil. Hallelujah. Nothing of the devil. Glory to God. Now I'm going to round up. I'm going to give you this little testimony. Okay? Interesting. Interesting. Amen. Now this happened. Amen. And it happened in Nigeria. It was a woman that gave the testimony. This was a woman. She was a wonderful woman. Woman of, you know, deacon in the church. Serving God. Doing everything wonderful. And, um... After a while, uh, she was the only one saved in her family. Amen. And so she got sick. And, um, you know, the church prayed for her, and she didn't recover. They prayed, and they believed God, but she kept getting sicker and sicker. And after a while, um, her sister, who was, you know, an idol worshiper, serving all these witch doctors and all that junk, came to her and said, I know this man that can help you. You know, and she said, who is that? And then she said, he's in your so, so, so. And so she knew that she was referring to some kind of witch, whatever. And she rebuked the sister. said, God forbid. I'm a child of God. You know, I'm a deacon in the church. How could I go to that kind of place? What my church people see, say they see me going into that <laughs> hidden place. You know, the devil's always <laughs> in hidden places. The Bible says those who do wickedness do it at night. <laughs> so how could this, you know, how could I? You know, it was so appalling. But however, she started getting sicker and sicker. So the sister came to her again. And said, you know, the witch doctor, you know, he will help you. What, you know, don't be religious. Don't, you know, when you're, you know, when you're sick, that, that, that's what we call real temptations. Amen. Devil will tell you, after all, the church has prayed. God has not done anything. Why don't you go? She said, no, 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 no. I can't do that. I'm a deacon. You see, if your, your, your holiness is based on your office, you're more likely to fall. You know, if your holiness is based on, you know, the church people may see me. What if they don't see you? Are you still going to do it? You understand? So her, her, her conviction was not based, I can't do that to Jesus. I love him. It's based, oh, what would the church people say? Do you understand? So that's, that's not a really strong foundation to stand on. Amen. So they pleaded with her, pleaded with her. Of course, she refused. And then finally, the sister came. I mean, she was almost dying. The sister came and told her, the witch doctor said, you don't need to come. Just place your finger on this little coin as an agreement that he would bring healing. Do you understand? The devil has made it so convenient for her now. She doesn't need to go where church people see. All she needs to do is to say, you know, put my hand and say, I agree with him. Go and let him pray for me. Do you understand? Do you know what happened? <laughs> the moment she put her finger on that thing, she died. She died. Luckily for her, they called the church and the church began to pray. They began to pray. Because God gave the, the pastor a vision that she was not going to die, that she's going to come back from the dead. So God just wanted to preserve her. So they prayed and they prayed and they prayed. Now, this woman she said, the moment she died, she said she found herself going down a dark tunnel. And then she saw herself going up into the light. And she said just as she was about to cross into the light, she said a little dark figure stood before her. And said, you're not going anywhere. 
And she said, I am a child of God. I'm a deacon in a church. And she was arguing. And that little demon or whatever said, you're not going anywhere. And she was arguing and said, I am ch- I've been born again for 25 years. God has saved me. I've been washed in the blood. And the demon brought out the coin. He said, remember this? She started crying. And that was when Jesus appeared there. And then she woke up. I just want to show you access. Access. I'm telling you, if the church had not prayed, she might have been lost. So the devil looks for access. You think the, the Bible calls him the accuser. He's a lawyer. Do you know that? A good lawyer that's been practicing for millions of years. <laughs> I don't know how old he is, whether it's 6,000 years or more, but he's been practicing for long. So if you say, well, I'm just going to do this, you know, how a lot of us say, oh, I'm just going to drink half a, a cup, and, you know, after that I will stop. You're fooling yourself. <laughs> You're dealing with somebody that knows how to do it. And after you take that one, you know, he's going to, you know, send some friends and they're going to knock on your door and they'll come with 10 bottles of what you've just taken. And you wonder and you know that the devil is, he's working overnight. Amen. Hallelujah. My prayer is that this will bless you and will strengthen you and will let you know that we need to keep ourselves for the Lord. It's not about what's right and what's wrong. It's about keeping yourself pure. Don't let or don't give the devil access to your life. Don't give him access to your children. Don't give him access to your home. Amen? And let God's glory visit you in Jesus' name. Amen. Any questions? Any, other, any questions? Any contributions? Amen? Hallelujah. So I'll let Pastor come up. I just want to give a quick thought on something he mentioned and, and God's people dying young. I, I do not believe that it is God's will unless he has called you, as you said, to a life of martyrdom for the gospel. Um, I believe that's a very special calling. Um, but people die young because something went wrong. And sometimes we don't know what it is, but here's one of them. Ephesians chapter 6. And some of y'all need to hear this because some of you have parents that are not godly. And some of you are grown, think I ain't got to listen to my mama no more. And all this stuff. Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right Honor your father father and mother. This is the first command with a promise. See, none of the other commands came with a promise up to that point. This is the first command with a promise. And what is the promise? It says that you will live long in the land and you will be well. So do you want good health? Do you want long life? If you've been nasty to your parents, you better make it right. I have a challenged relationship with my dad. And it's a challenge for me to bless my dad. But I have to bless my dad. Why? Because I believe this word. And I don't want to give the devil access. Because we know in the Bible the blessing comes from the Father. I can't curse my father and receive his blessing. I don't care how nasty I may think he is. Let's stand. Father, we thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for this series. I thank you for this teaching. Lord, we do not have to give the enemy any access. Lord, we don't have to give him a foothold. We don't have to give him a touch. We don't have to give him anything. The Bible says that we can close the door on the enemy, that you've given us weapons, and the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. Lord, principalities have no access to us because we are in you. Lord Jesus, the same spirit that raised you from the dead lives in us, and Lord, you never got sick. You never had weakness. You never gave in to temptation. So, Lord, we call on that spirit to help us, the Holy Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, can the church say amen? Amen. All right, see you all Sunday. God bless.